Yes. How you doing everybody? Welcome to the DCSI Parts Guys. We're presented by Dealership CSI. We're powered by ESPM. And today we're going to talk about the power of yes. I'm Rick and direct from Pewaukee, Wisconsin. We got Jer. How you doing today, Jer? Doing real good, Rick. Looking forward to this uh, episode and uh, talking about some things that are really going to make a difference in your inventory management. And that's what we're trying to do here with the DCSI parts guys is give you some tips and tricks for professional inventory management, kind of inside stuff that you can't get anywhere else and help you improve your parts operation and the, uh, everything that goes along with it. So Jared, what do you think is the most important job of the parts department? Well, Rick, the most important job is to supply the needs of the technicians out in the service department because they're taking care of your customers' cars, and that's really where your biggest opportunity to make money in the dealership is, is by uh, getting cars through that service department. So having the right assortment available and having those parts for your technicians is probably the most important job of uh, parts department's operations. So that's a pretty tall order and uh, most parts departments are overwhelmed with this whole idea of what should I stock, where should I get it, and the technicians are constantly coming up with new requests and things are changing pretty fast. So first of all, let's talk about what's going to happen in the service department when a technician walks up to the window. There's one word that we want to say to a technician when they come up and ask the simple question, do you have it? And that word is yes. And that's what it's all about today is the power of yes and being able to say yes. However, what happens when we can't say yes, Jer? Well, when we can't say yes to the technicians, obviously, we have to say no. That's because we don't have the part available. So there's a number of things that happens when we're not able to say yes to a technician, Rick. Well, that's exactly right, Jer, and that's the problem. Uh, a lot of people don't understand how all these chain of events happen when I just say no. So the very first thing that happens is the technician has to go back, reassemble the car. <clears throat> now they need to take the car out of the shop, go get a new job, get the car, get it back in the shop, and uh, then what happens, Jerry? Well, once he's got it back in the shop, obviously he's got to put it on the lift, so he's got to raise the car up on the lift. Then he's going to have to start begin the repairs all over again. So it has the power here to actually start repeating the cycle all over, but uh, he's got to have the parts department locate the part whenever they don't have it and try to find out where we're going to get it from. Are we going to have to order it? Are we going to pick it up locally? Then after that, We've got to contact the customer, advise the customer there's going to be some delay in getting their car repaired because we don't have the part available. And then obviously we may have to extend a loaner car arrangement. If the customer is in a loaner car or a rental car, we may have to extend that because we can't get the part the same day. And then finally, when you say no to the technician, you're also going to have to reschedule that job. Uh, you may reschedule it for later in the day, you may have to reschedule it for tomorrow, and who knows, tomorrow's schedule might be even worse than today, so there's all kinds of consequences, and that's just uh, one of the many steps involved there. Well, and that's the problem, then when we do get the part, we got to start all over again, so we get the car back up in the air, uh, finish the repair finally, close the RO, perform an active delivery, give the car back to the customer, finally, and if we happen to have another part problem, we got to start all over in step one. So that creates a real problem. We've got 15 steps that we go through every time we say no to a technician. 
and that can span over uh, the course of a couple of days depends on how long to get the part um, the biggest problem here is we've got to face the customer and tell them that the promise we made this morning about having the car done today is not going to happen uh, we've got the loaner car in play we've got all kinds of complications it would be real easy if we could just say yes to a technician jer what happens when we do that well, obviously, when you say yes to the technician, he gets the part, goes out, fixes the car, re completes the repair job, and we have a satisfied customer because we can now call the customer and tell them that the car is ready and done. It's available for pickup, so he moves on to another job and we get another customer through the shop. That's exactly right. It's a real simple deal and nobody takes uh, uh, much consideration about how simple it is, but we fix the car, close the RO, we perform the active delivery, we got three steps and we're done and we've got a happy customer out of the deal. So Jerry, that's what we want to shoot for in the parts department is get more and more of those and be sure that we have the right parts on the shelf and uh, uh, more often than not we're able to say yes. But Jerry, that's a pretty complicated uh, task these days just because of all the parts that are coming out in the new cars and all the changes that are being made. Um, there's a couple of things that we have put into place in our uh, process of professional inventory management which will help get a dealership on the right track and start moving towards improving this assortment. So Jer, if we're looking at the steps to go down the road here, the very first thing we're talking about is total demand posting. And that means we've got to tell the computer every time we have a request for a part whether it be a part we sell, a part we didn't sell, a phone call, somebody out of the clear blue sky, for some reason somebody is asking for that part. And at the very least, all we want to do is tell the computer, today somebody asked about that part. And we're going to talk more about that in our next episode. Um, we're dancing around this whole topic and it's called the lost sale. So the next one, Jer, We've got to get some source organization. What do you know about that? Well, source organization really refers to not putting everything into one source. We want to be able to track our parts a little bit differently and treat them differently. So obviously the goal here should be to focus on those parts that are being used out in your service department and to aggressively get those onto the shelf so we can say yes to the technician. So. You need some kind of source organization where you're breaking your parts out into different groups that we can treat them differently. Accessories don't get treated the same way as those mechanical parts. Collision parts are a completely different animal altogether and we don't want to treat them the same way we're treating our mechanical parts for the shop. So you have to have some organization and we're going to show you some examples maybe of how you can break out your sources in the future. but. You know, just keep in mind that you want to have different sources for different types of parts. Accessories, tires, mechanical parts, collision parts, they all need to be set up separately. Jer, once we get everything set up that way, um, now we've got to talk about what are we going to do with these sources and how are we going to manage them. And that gets back to the phase in and phase out settings. So we've got to focus on proper settings on phase in and phase out and that gets back to different strategies for different kinds of parts. So we need to have that source organization, we need to then apply some management technique to it, and then number four, Jer, we're able to finally increase the parts assortment. What happens when that comes about? Well, when we increase that parts assortment, obviously we want to be increasing the assortment of mechanical parts for the shop, so when we do that, we broaden our breadth of inventory part numbers that we're stocking and we're able to say yes to the technician more frequently. So it goes back to what we talked about in the beginning here, the power of yes. And when we can maximize that power of yes and say yes to the technician more frequently, we're going to make more money because we're going to get more work through the shop. We're going to have more productive and more efficient technicians. All of that leads to happier customers and obviously repeat customers come from happy customers. And that's the whole game, Jerry. That's exactly what we're trying to do. And that assortment that you're talking about is the key. Uh, how many parts do I have in my building that would allow me to say yes to a technician? And if you think about it, 
if I have, I'm like a typical dealer, I may have 1,000, maybe 2,000 parts on the shelf that I've decided to stock. So when a technician comes up and says, do you have this? I've got 2,000 choices. What if I had 3,000 parts on the shelf? Well, now I've got 3,000 choices or 4,000 parts on the shelf. Now I've got 4,000 choices. And the game changes dramatically when we're able to bring parts into the equation, have them on the shelf, and hand them directly to the technicians. So in future episodes, we're going to start talking about how to get that done and uh, make sure that we have everything in play, make sure we're buying the right parts and increasing that assortment. And like you said, Jer, it's all about saying yes, because the customer is driving this entire business. And if we can't satisfy the customer, we're going to lose them. And we're going to lose them to the competition. They're going to leave our dealer. They're going to leave our franchise. And that's something we can't afford to happen. So the parts department plays a pivotal role. We're going to talk about that in the future as it gets more and more critical on how we put this stuff together. So I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Hope you got something out of the power of yes. And just remember, that's the word you want to say in your parts department. Any kind of request that comes in, I want to say yes. So thanks again and uh, check out our channel, the DCSI Parts Guys. Uh, if you uh, want to subscribe, if you want to drop a few uh, likes and comments and share this around with your friends. And Jer, I want to thank you for joining us here in uh, Pewaukee, Wisconsin this morning. Rick, it was my pleasure joining you, and like I said, uh, hopefully this will give you some idea of where we're going. Uh, there's future episodes coming up, so stay tuned and practice saying yes to your technicians. Good advice, Jer. So let's go out and make some money.